Sarah Z is an artist from Boston, Massachusetts, who currently works in the New York City area. She's a professor of visual arts at Columbia University. She got her BA from Yale University in 1991 and her MFA from the School of Visual Arts in 1997. Her background is with architecture and painting and is seen as an influence in many of her sculptures. Many of her sculptures are on a large scale and contain suspended objects. They are displayed in public places such as museums and airport terminals. This is one of her sculptures called Seamless. It was originally made in 1999. It was put into storage and is now on display again in 2018. You can see how Sarah used her painting background. The sculpture has a very painterly feel for it. The objects are spread across the room almost like brush strokes. Many of the tools that were used in the piece during its construction are actually incorporated in part of the piece as well. For example, ladder may have been used to help assemble the piece and is left behind as a part of the piece and exposed wiring for the electricity and the sculpture itself becomes a tool that you can use for understanding space and time. Other objects also used are everyday objects and ready-made objects which helps portray the artist's message of interconnectability and sustainability. This next piece is called Triple Point Pendulum from 2013. And triple Point refers to triple point of water and how it can have three states, solid, liquid, and gas, and how they coexist between them. Like these in-between spaces, the sculpture itself has a sort of tension of all the suspended objects that are shown and it shows the line between wonder and anxiety. Water is in a constant state of flux and the objects are also suspended seeming like they could shift at any moment. This can describe the wonder and anxiety that we get from information and objects in our contemporary life. This next sculpture is called Fallen Sky from 2019. It is a concave sculpture that it consists of a reflective material. It reverses how people normally look at landscape. You get a view of the sky, which normally is perceived as vast and is measurable and far away from us, but now it is brought close, as the sculpture's name says, as if it has fallen from the sky down to us. It is now viewed in a more intimate way as something that you can inspect closely and is framed by the landscape around it. It pays tribute to ancient sites around the world but also is a response to environmental change that happens around us. It is a union between the land and the sky which are normally seen as separate and apart and shows how we are connected. This piece is called Crescent, or Timekeeper, and it's from 2019. It is Sarah's exploration of time and trying to measure it, and as in many of her other sculptures, how she has this strong connection between objects and how time is marked by them. The sculpture uses a variety of different objects, such as desks, images, and projectors. Sarah likes to have images that are layered and make the sculpture look unstable and chaotic, so this places the viewer in a position of active discovery, much like our relationship with our own memories. The sculpture itself is an attempt to measure time, not in a chronological way that we're used to. When you look at the sculpture, time does not feel linear. It's more of many moments. The sculpture shows a moment held in place, experienced repeatedly over and over. The sculpture's combination of architecture, instruments, and technology shows this is a scientific exploration of how to measure time and how we perceive it in our lives. When perceiving time, it's like a snapshot in our brain of multiple things. This is one of Sarah's more recent works called Shorter Than the Day from 2020. It is 
on display at LaGuardia Airport Terminal. It consists of thousands of images taken of the New York sky. It shows her fascination with taking multiple images and layering them into one larger image. Everything is interconnected and creates a larger piece. It explores her connection between space and time and how it interacts and how we interact with it. It comes from the quote from an Emily Dickinson poem, we passed the setting sun, or rather it passed us and requires us to view our perception of the world around us from two different ways. I'm now going to play a clip where Sarah talks about her work Seamless, which was on display in 2018, originally made in 1999. Artist. This is a piece that I actually made for the Carnegie International in 1999 in Pittsburgh. And it was put into storage for 19 years, and it's just come out of storage and been reinstalled for the first time since then. I have a background in architecture and in painting, so this work actually is this kind of interesting marriage of the two. So you see painting and architecture coming together to make a sculpture. So a lot of the decisions are very painterly decisions. The composition is a play between a very structured kind of composing and movement of something like a brushstroke thrown across a room. The objects are the same objects from 1999. And I think actually part of the idea was also that they would be objects that somehow in their extremely practical use were sort of already perfected and might not change. Technology is totally the opposite. If these were cameras from 1999, they'd be unusable. The idea of using hardware tools is an interesting idea because this idea that all of the tools to make the piece then become the piece, that the work, that a sculpture is a kind of tool for understanding space and time, and then the, the tools almost like a kit, like everything you need to make the piece is actually in the piece itself. And there's again, there's a blurring of the scene between what's a tool to make things with or to use in a practical way and what's an aesthetic tool. How do we use things aesthetically to understand the world or to make things? So you find things like ladders or you see the electricity, you see all of the actual you know, tools that you would, might need, let's say, to remake this piece. Also, it's interesting in this piece, I realized reinstalling it, is the idea of the archive and how you, how you sort of mark time through objects. So there are things in the piece that you, if you spend time with it, you can see it was made in 1999. And there are things that I've added that would actually inform that it was reinstalled at this date. So that this idea of a kind of collection of objects that actually define or become a portrait of the behavior of the time and there's some evidence of it right here in a very archival way. So there's actually the ID card from 1999 is in the piece. And I've added actually the Tate ID card as well. So there's a 1999 receipt up in this part of the piece. And then there's a receipt um, from today. In conclusion, I really liked Sarah Z's work because she made a visual representation of time using objects and how we interact with them and how it's not linear, but it's all a collection of our different memories that create this one big picture. And these are my credits.